Hey everybody, welcome to Dashboard Headquarters. In this video, we will talk about how to assemble your guide rail brackets. So at this point, you have opened the box, unwrapped the parts, and laid everything out. So let's just take a quick look and see everything that you have. Um, for starters, you should have two of these base plates, one pivot plate, one axle yoke assembly. This is assembled but not tightened. We'll get to that later. This is the pin plate. Uh, pin plate block, and these are two risers. Uh, these go together with the um, base plates. So the hardware that we have here is um, four flathead screws. Um, this is the locating pin with its own screw. Uh, we call these the center studs. A couple of washers and um, knobs, other washers and knobs. This is for the mounting hardware. This is for adjusting the height on your brackets. Uh, these are special uh, screws, flatheads for attaching the pivot plate to the uh, riser. Um, these screws are for attaching the pivot plate to the pin block. And over here we have the pressure bar with two knobs and two washers and one screw that will uh, go into the front of the pressure bar. Two wrenches. Uh, this is a pin cert, which fits over the um, locating pin here with a wrench of its own because it has a couple of Allen screws, a uh, bag of thread lock, and these four screws are special washer heads. These are only if you're using the brackets on a Festool MFT3 table. So we include them with everything, um, but not everyone is going to use them. So now the first thing you wanna do, make sure you have a number two Phillips screwdriver and a number three Phillips screwdriver. And so the best way to start is that you're gonna put the center studs into the base plates. Now this is where we need to talk about the uh, thread lock. Uh, this is how you wanna put thread lock on the center stud. We only want it right up at the end under the head because this is gonna go through the back of the base plate and we don't want thread lock extending out here on the uh, sort of active part of the center stud. So just put a little dab there and it runs pretty freely. So just be careful you don't use too much. So we just put this through here and we'll just imagine that the thread lock is on there. Number three Phillips goes in here and just tighten that. So we do want thread lock on that remembering um, just because we don't want that to spin at any point in the future. This is gonna be permanent. And the thread lock we have is very strong stuff. So make sure you wanna use it when you use it. So here we have both center studs installed. And now uh, let's take a look at the risers. So the one riser is gonna get this pin block. And for that, just line those holes up as you can see just holding it with my thumb and that's where the flathead screws come in. And so you probably want to use some thread lock on these. Again, I'm not doing it for this video just for the sake of simplicity, but I would put it on the screw before I put it in the hole just to keep things a little neater. And there's that one and this one. Everything is very nicely machined. It will match up well. And these will all set themselves up exactly where they need to be for the next steps. Uh, we'll just tighten that and tighten this. So that's the pin block. And now since we're started on this one, you can see as we have in the front bracket here, it's facing this way. So we're gonna put the pin plate on like this in those two holes right there. So that's what these two small screws are for. And for this, we will use the number two Phillips. And I'll just leave that slightly loose before I get the other one in here. So that's now 
looking good. We'll just tighten that, making sure not to cam out the screwdriver. At this point, we might as well just put our locating pin in. And uh, for the Festool type rail, uh, Festool, Powertech, Makita, etc., we want to use this hole. And so if you have a DeWalt set, we have another video about that, but that pin goes in this hole. But don't, they, don't make that mistake now if you have a Festool style rail. So just put this screw through there and we're gonna put the pin on here. This is a stainless steel pin. And be very careful in your thought process if you decide to put thread lock on this because this will be exceedingly difficult to get off if you ever wanna change rails if you put thread lock in this. Basically, you can't get it off without destroying the pin. So think about that carefully. If you ever wanna change rails, um, you probably don't wanna put thread lock on this. Just make sure it's tight. Um, I've never had one fall off So if I didn't put thread lock on it. So that riser is set. This one is gonna get the axle yoke assembly. So same situation, and we want the arched part of this facing out and down. So let's just make sure that's arranged like that and get the screw set up here. Start that one. I'd like to use not, not tighten the first one all the way until I get the second one going as well, just so it's easy to line everything up. So these, again, will orient the parts very accurately. And it's pretty satisfying to put these together. Tight tolerances. So that's all nice and tight. As, as I said before, this is assembled, but not uh, at its final tension. And so, I mean, at this point, it's convenient to tighten that. And so I'm gonna use the same Allen wrench and this special stainless wrench goes over the nut. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, what is the correct tension for this assembly? The correct tension is tighter than you think because at this point, you know, it should be really hard to move with your hand and almost immovable with your hand, but you can check that later. Basically, when you put the pivot plate on here, you get a rail on here, there's a ton of leverage acting on it when you're doing this. So you want it to be pretty tight. Anyway, that's now ready to go. So the next step is let's put the pivot plate on. And there's only one way you can do this. So that hole fits over this neck. And then you can see we've got these holes here. They're gonna line up. And we take these very short undercut head screws. For these, you wanna make sure to use the number three Phillips, and I do recommend putting a uh, thread lock on these for sure. And that just goes right in there. Second one comes along, and the other hole, these are all self-aligning, which is really convenient. So that's nice and tight. That's nice and tight. So now we have the pivoting assembly all set, and it's time to put the pressure bar on. So if you notice, this assembled set, this is already set up for uh, Festool tile, uh, style rail. Um, so as you look at it, it's the set of holes on the right, if you will, depending on how you look at it. On this side, um, not these, these are for DeWalt. We can talk about that in the other video. So. Um, very simply, this goes in like this, like that. And so what you wanna do is take this screw and you should put thread lock on the end of this and it's gonna go through this hole right here into that hole in the front of the pressure bar. So I'm just gonna get that started, put the wrench on it. Now we, we just wanna run this through until it's flush or slightly below the top surface of the pressure bar here. And so it will take a little while for that thread lock to set up. You will never tighten this again. You will never loosen it again. Its only purpose is to govern how far you can lift the pressure bar. Remember that, don't tighten it again. You are not 
going to be successful if you do because it's too long to work anyway. It's going to run into the inside of your rail and it's, you can't tighten it. And it's not meant for that. It governs this lifting. Okay. So now we'll get these knobs and these big washers on the studs that are uh, molded into the pressure bar. This one here, this one here. Super simple. So now we have the ability to pull down the pressure bar, which is holding your rail to the bracket. But for now, let's just leave those loose. So you can move this up and down, no problem. So now we're substantially complete. We're gonna mount uh, the pivoting assembly on uh, the base plate for the rear bracket. Now, if you have one of our benches, you're gonna to wanna to assemble this with the notch up. If you have any other bench, the notch will go down. So since I'm assembling this for a dashboard bench, I'm just gonna put this together over the center stud. And now I'm gonna take a black plastic washer, put this over the stud, one of the other knobs right on there. So now that is how we control the raising and lowering of the guide rail bracket. Um, the last thing we can do is just get the mounting hardware and you will have received information about which set of holes you should use for your particular table. And in this case, I'm using this top set of holes for the rear guide rail bracket on a dashboard bench. So nothing to it. So now we have one fully assembled rear guide rail bracket. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to make a determination of whether that pivoting action needs to be a little tighter. Um, you know, it's not gonna hurt you at this point if you make it a little tighter than you made it earlier. Because as I said, once a rail goes on there, the leverage it exerts is gonna be tremendous, much more than you can do with your fingers. So I just tighten it a little bit and you'll get a sense of it when you are actually using this, you know, how much tension you want, how much resistance you want when you move the rail. But for now, this is all set. So now front bracket, substantially similar. Um, we always want the notch facing down. Same thing, drop it over the center stud, grab a washer, knob, and that's all set. Raising and lowering, no problem. And we will put the mounting hardware in the appropriate set of holes for your table. In the case of the dashboard, top set of holes, and that will apply to some other tables too. So now, this one is all set. So we have a complete guide rail bracket set, ready for use, ready for installation on your table. Uh, we have other videos detailing uh, setup on your particular table, and those are linked below. Thanks for watching.